Hi, Mr. Lunduke. I'm a 34-year-old computer science student, and my question for you is thus. He didn't actually say the word thus. I added the thus. Do you think there is an age cap to start programming? Saludos from Jesus via email. Jesus, there is absolutely not an age gap to start programming. But there are significant age discrimination issues with in the general programming and IT fields without a doubt. I got a lot to say on this. So first, within the coding community, we tend to look up to our more seasoned veteran developers. You know, our John Mad Dog Hall or, or Richard Stallman or <laughs> or Eric Raymond or or Linus is even getting up there. I mean there's there's a lot of developers that are starting to show their age. <laughs> Sorry to any of you guys that are feeling like you're not getting up there in age. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of them that are start and, and and that doesn't even get into you know the Dennis Ritchies and whatnot of the world and the Steve Watts Bosniaks and everyone else. There's so many uh, grandfathers, elder statesmen of uber nerdiness that are looked up to and revered. But at the same time, within the big companies, they really don't like aging software developers so much. Um, I remember when I was at Microsoft, I was working uh, for a period of time in the Macintosh business unit. It was um, it was where we made uh, Office and things like that for Macintosh inside Microsoft, and um, I know there was one one developer there that and I, won't, I won't say any names so I don't get anyone in trouble or anything. There was one developer there that um, uh, ended up kind of getting not so much fired but phased out, um, and he was fantastic. He was highly qualified, uh, super qualified. One of, the, one of the smartest devs I've ever seen. I mean, he was just brilliant, but he was aging. Uh, he was getting older, and that meant that, well, he was going to put up with less, you know? He was not going to put up with the same amount of stuff that a 22-year-old developer fresh out of a computer science degree would put up with. A fresh kid under the age of 30, oh my gosh, you can work them to the bone. You can work them, you know, 80 hours a week and they'll complain and whine maybe, but they'll do it. You tell that to a, you know, a 55-year-old guy who's got a family at home, he's just going to look at you. He's like, what are you talking about? I'll give you five extra hours. You get 45 hours. Let's make it work, right? <laughs> like, it's just, the, the older a person gets, the less they're going to put up with that sort of stuff. Just as a general rule of thumb. And companies don't like that. They, they like to be able to use their employees and abuse their employees, whether they like to think of it like that or not. And uh, what's even more interesting than that, I think, is that as a person gets older, they have a wider wealth of experience, even if it's not in programming. So like, for example, you're a 34 year, four year old focusing on computer science right now. My guess is you've got experience in something else leading up to now. And maybe, you know, maybe it was in food service. Maybe it was in the medical field. Maybe it was in truck driving. You know, who knows what it is, but you'll have some other experience that you bring to the table, which is going to inevitably mean that you're probably going to be asking for more income than a 22 year old kid you probably you're more likely to have a family or getting close to having a family you're more likely to have maybe a house or a nice car or, you know, all these things that use money right and so you're not going to be as satisfied with low wages but maybe some stock options that might vest 27 and a half thousand years into the future you're not going to be happy with that and so because of that, as you age, and 34 is not too old, but as you age into your 40s and in your 50s especially, you're going to notice that even if you're amazing in your field and you're just renowned, you are going to have a harder time at some of the bigger companies because of that. There absolutely is age discrimination within the field. There totally is. Uh, anyone saying otherwise is just you know, not even paying attention. I mean, it totally is. It's, it's a real thing. I don't know of a way to fix it. Um, I, I don't have any recommendations for it, people out there, but being aware that it's happening is kind of a good first step. But 
on the flip side of your question, it's really never too late to learn a new programming language or to learn how to program in general to start with. Uh, your brain can handle it. Um, I, I might say that as you get older, it might be harder to learn new languages. But once, once you learn a handful of languages, like let's say you learn Java and Python or, right? or C or something like that, all of a sudden it becomes really easy to pick up some Ruby over here and some JavaScript over there and, and heck, maybe in a little assembly over here, right? Like picking up bits and pieces of other languages becomes really easy because you start to notice that there's significant patterns and commonalities among the vast majority of programming languages. And once you've got a couple under your belt, picking up the rest of them, it's not like instant, but you can do it pretty fast. So if you do find yourself having a bit of a mental hurdle of learning a new language like C and whatnot, here's my recommendation. Either A, just power through it as best you can so you get to the point where you feel comfortable in that language, all the rest of them are going to be 10, 10 times easier. Or B, this may sound crazy, but pick an easier language. Uh, hear me out on this one. Um, let's say you're sitting down and working on um, C++. Let's say you start with C++ for some reason in your degree field or the projects you want to work on. And your brain is just like, oh, I just, I'm having a hard time getting my brain to wrap around this. Well, take a pause. Just take a, take a, a week out, just one week, and say, you know what? This week, I'm going to pick something easy. I'm going to pick a... It's one of the more human readable scripting languages, like a basic type language. Pick something that just looks easy, something that visually you look at and you think, oh my gosh, that's just going to be easy to work with. Like, uh, for example, there is a, um, a visual basic like development environment that's all free software called Gambas, uh, G-A-M-B-A-S. Um, it's a basic language that, um, you know, works on Linux, has a nice Linux client and it IDE and it, it's very simple to use. Is that something you're going to likely use in your professional life? No. But if you look at it and you think, well, this is easy to get into, this is easy to understand, and you maybe whip out a quick project or two in it and feel start feeling comfortable with the language concepts, moving from that to your second language is, is going to be a little less intimidating, right? Coding, in my opinion, is all about having fun. I'm a big believer that developing software is as much engineering as it is art. And when you really start to get comfortable with a language, you'll get into a groove and you'll just fly, my friend. 34 is not too old at all to pick up programming a new or to pick up a new language. Not in the slightest. You'll do you'll do great, Jesus. No, no problems there at all. But yeah, when you get older, there will be some age discrimination unless you find yourself at a really awesome company or working solo, in which case you're going to be just fine. Um, <laughs> this episode, boom, is brought to you by Linode. Go to linode.com slash lunduke. That's right. That's the URL from from straight above and get a $20 credit off of new subscription. So you can go there, sign up anew using linode.com slash Lunduke. Sign up, they're all, all new. Um, even if you've got a Linode account, go there and sign up at that URL just to give me credit, just because you like me. Uh, you get $20 credit towards like a VPS or something like that. You can put it in I believe any data center you want. They've got a they've got a new data center that opened up in Toronto. They've got data centers all over the place. You can set up a nice little VPS, put some Nextcloud on there, put your personal WordPress blog on there, or or like me, I just have a static website I can host on one of those little VPSs there over at Linode. It's awesome, awesome company. They love supporting free and open source software. They're at like every major Linux convention in the land. Linode.com, or you can go to linode.com and see all the other stuff stuff I do. I do some stuff is what I'm telling you right now. Uh, I'm also the deputy editor over at Linux Journal Magazine. So if you go to linuxjournal.com, you can sign up over there. Best Linux articles in the land, I dare say. Uh, perhaps I am uh, a bit uh, <coughs> biased, but uh, just the same. Um, also, you can check out this show on YouTube. You can get the RSS feed from Lunduke.com, though the RSS feed's been broken for like a week. Sorry about that, guys. Part of the script broke. Ugh. 
it's getting fixed. Um, but normally that works just fine. Hopefully by the time you get this, the RSS feeds back up and working, or you can go to library and use this library is a standalone application. It's available on Linux desktop and Mac and Windows too, but I don't have those. So I don't use them. Um, Android, I think there's even an iOS version where it's think of it like YouTube, only decentralized and all blockchainy. And when you watch a video, you're actually downloading an MP4 file with no DRM. So if you want a way to watch my shows, get notified when new ones are out, help support me in the process. Because if you go there, you can like tip me in their little Bitcoin, not Bitcoin, library coin, right? Library coin, LBC, something like that. You can tip me in that. And then I get, you know, a couple cents here and there. It may not be a lot, but it's a whole lot more than I get from YouTube, I tell you that much. And you, in the end, get a little MP4 file. Now, here's what I think. If you grab a DRM-free MP4 file of this show, you can keep it. Put it on your home network server. Burn it to a CD. Put it on a thumb drive and stick it in a brick wall somewhere. Do a little dead drop action. I don't care. Pass it around however you like. If you have media... If you have your content and you are abiding by the rules of the person who created that content, that media is yours. That media is yours to back up, archive, and watch however you want on whatever operating system you want, on whatever devices you want, using whatever piece of software you want. That's just how it should be. Anyway, so lots of different ways for you to grab the show. And that's it.